real customers give you information that you can't get anywhere else. And so with the A-B testing, we were able to better identify what we should do. And we were able to identify low-hanging fruit that we could immediately harvest. We were able to generate more revenue in a very short period of time. We were able to generate more customer plays in a short period of time. And that overall is a, just a huge value. And going forward, we looked at it as if we don't have A-B testing in our games, we're, we're making a huge mistake. It would be just crazy not to have it. And so it's, a, it's become an integral part of what we do going forward. I'm Russell Carroll, and I was the producer on Air Patriots, which is a kind of a tower defense game, but the towers are all planes, so they never stop moving. It's a little different that way. I'm Julio Orge, one of the programmers on Air Patriots. So there were a lot of different A-B tests that we ran inside of Air Patriots. I'm going to tell you about some today. Um, we did uh, marketing. Of course, marketing is really important to a game because we need to bring in customers. And so we did a cross-promotion test with Air Patriots. It's one of the first tests we did, a really simple test. After you get customers in, you then are trying to keep them. And so we had a couple of tests around that as well, which is retention. So these would be our retention tests. We have a local notifications test that we did, as well as a difficulty test. And then after you brought customers in and you're keeping them in, the next thing, of course, is to monetize. And that's where most people start thinking mostly about A-B testing, but it's really through the whole process that you want to be uh, using it. With monetization, we did a test with ads, which is one that a lot of people think about because they want to know what's the impact of ads. And that's what we want to know as well. So the ads experiment's really interesting. We went into ads with a, a question. We wanted to understand what the impact of the ads would be on our customers. Now, everything should come around your customers. You want to be thinking about customers first. And as developers, you know, we're a little bit sometimes, I don't know, we don't really want to negatively impact customers with ads. That's just to put it real bluntly. And as a player, I don't like ads. I don't like having it in my game. I don't like accidentally clicking on them. And so we wanted to make sure we didn't harm the customer experience. We wanted to have a positive customer experience. And so when we first added ads, we did it on the main menu. We put it at the bottom. We reduced the number of buttons that we had at the bottom to put on ads. And we had a little X on the side of the ads. These are banner ads. And we were testing to see what's the impact on the customers. So in the tool, we were, which is the A-B testing tool inside of the Amazon portal, we were checking to see conversion of the number of people purchasing. But I wanted to go deeper than that. I wanted to know our customers staying with us. And so we were looking at our retention numbers using engagement. And that was really, really important to us. What we found was the ads didn't impact retention. And that was a positive step. That was a nice big breath of air for us as developers. And so when we went on to our second test, our second test was putting ads on the main game field. Now, I said it's a tower defense game, Air Patriots is. So if you think of a tower defense game field, that's, that's really what we had. We put it over at the top, over the top of information for the game, like our score which is kind of a crazy thing to do. We put it in there for just 10 seconds, and again with this red X, and that's important because what happened is a user could get rid of these ads at any time by pressing the X. When they did so, a pop-up box would come up and say, if you want to get rid of ads forever, buy something in the store. Any purchase in the store, we get rid of ads. And that really leads to the second thing we found. So we weren't negatively impacting our retention with these two ad placements. We did, however, have a slight but statistically significant increase to revenue. And we, we, uh, we determined it was probably due to that X and the customers pressing that and then saying, oh, well, I want to go and buy something and then I can get rid of these, these ads. Um, and for the other customers who didn't mind, then, well, of course, we get additional revenue from, from the ads themselves. So this was a great uh, test that allowed us to put in ads to the game with confidence that we weren't going to negatively impact our customers, which was incredibly important to us. One of the managers came and said, hey, is, is this the right thing to be doing? Shouldn't you have another alternative? Or, or, I mean, how do you know you've got the right one? And, you know, as developers, we always think, well, of course we've got the right one. We know what we're doing. Um, but this is a great opportunity for us to go, okay, let's throw another one in. This is really the simplest type of test you can do. You're just testing two things, one against another. In this case, with the two images, one of them had an A, you know, the familiar kind of Amazon A with a little smile under it. The other one was a little bit more based off of the, uh, the beach ball icon that you have for Game Circle. And so we put the other one together and we were able to test them, split down the results and identify, hey, this one's converting, the one that we thought was better. In this case, we were fortunate, uh, was converting at twice the, the rate of the other one. And you know, don't pull this out to show a mistake by anyone. There are mistakes, and I'll, I'll get to one in just a moment, but uh, it was a great test to identify something very simple. And it's the, the simplest type of test you can do. 
So speaking of mistakes, one of the more interesting uh, tests that we've run and one of the more important things that we've done came out of a mistake that I made. And this was, we were working on difficulty and I was working actually on trying to create multiple difficulty levels within the game. This was post-launch, very far post-launch, but I was just thinking, wouldn't it be fun? So I was playing around with variables that changed the difficulty on every single level through the game. I checked it in and it got tested by QA and by engineering and by me and none of us realized that I tested in a change in difficulty and we shipped it to customers. So we just saw a couple of reviews, some negative responses, and then we saw numbers. Our three day and seven day retention numbers dropped by 70%. This is huge, and our revenue numbers by 30%. We had just, just dive bombed in the game, and it was a, a terrible, terrible mistake, um, but also a happy accident, and I'll say why here in a moment. We did, of course, put out a fix, which was just the right version as soon as we possibly could, and we got that up and rolled out to all of the different stores. But we started thinking if a little change, and we were thinking it was probably about 10% harder is really where we ended up. If a little change can have that dramatic of an impact, what if we made it easier? instead of harder. Now, of course, we, we balanced it, we, we tested it, and we were very confident that we had the right difficulty, but real customers are sometimes not the same. And so A-B testing, we actually turned to A-B-N testing in this case. And with A-B-N testing, we were able to test five variables. We had our control, and we had four levels of difficulty that were easier, each one progressively easier than the last. And we were able to send that out, dividing all our customers into five groups, and all of the difficulty was actually externalized. It was in the portal itself. So in A-B testing, we could go online, go into the settings, and change the difficulty on the fly. And so we set one test and ran it, and what we saw was the easiest of those four groups actually did the best. And so we started there and started a second test, which is where we are currently, and we added three more levels of difficulty beyond that. And so this allowed us to identify what the customers do when it's easier. And what we found was, by making it easier, our easiest from the first test, we had players playing 20% longer. And of course, if they're playing longer, you know what happens next, which is our revenue increased by 20%. And this is crazy to me because this was, this, we would never have even thought about doing it if we hadn't made the mistake. So this is a happy accident because we learned an incredibly useful thing. And with one day of work, essentially, to put in a difficulty test, 20% increase in revenue. 20% increase in engagement? That's crazy. That's the, and that's really an opportunity that A-B testing gave us. And so this is one of the reasons why it's become so vital to us going forward. So after improving our conversion rate, we moved away our attention from monetization into retention. We wanted to re-engage with players who had not picked up the game for a long while, so we wanted to try out local notifications. Basically, this notification would pop up after a few days of inactivity and remind players to come back. Uh, in exchange, we will give them uh, some rewards, such as uh, a small amount of our virtual currency. Uh, the way we set up this A-B test was we put uh, every user in a different bucket, in a different group. Some users would see this notification after one day, other users would see this notification after two days, and so on. So we ran the test and we found that our sweet spot where most of our metrics across the board uh, increased the most was just three days, displaying a notification after three days. More interestingly, what we found out uh, is that some options, like say seven days, would actually have left us worse off. So you could say that A-B test is a great way to avoid, yourself, to avoid shooting yourself in the foot. And so inside the web tool itself, you're able to then go in, and this is one of the things I love the most about it, is you can go in and start seeing results, which as soon as we launch any new version with a new A-B test, it's almost like launch day all over again. I'm always going back into the portal and checking again and checking again, like, how's it testing? Which one seems to be doing well? What's the early returns? Which, of course, is a terrible thing to do because you have to wait till you get statistical significance and all these important things. But I love jumping in and finding out. What's more is you can directly change things in the portal. So if you have a test and you identify like something seems to be doing well, then well, you can fine tune further by stopping that test, starting a new test, and changing variables. So you don't have to go back in, create a new version of the app, upload a new version, and then start over. You're able to do this really on the fly. As well, the test, everything is just gonna keep uh, expanding as the number of users expands. So if you have 100 million users that have downloaded your app, well, you don't have to worry about like, well, how do I get everything online to be able to test with this number of people? It's already set up, it's gonna take care of it. So this leaves you really just one job, which is fine tune, tweak, find the winning combination for your customers.
A-B testing is a really valuable tool. And if I were to have any words of advice, and I've got maybe a couple for developers, first off would be start small. That first test that we did was an image test. It was really you know, for cross-promotion. We were identifying, is this image better or is this image better? That's as simple as you can get. So the second piece of advice I have would be to really look for opportunities. As a developer, once you get past those initial tests, the easy tests, you'll start thinking more. You should start thinking more about what can I do? How can I have an impact? Where are places I can turn the knobs to make things better? So the third thing is kind of an Amazon principle, but it always applies as a game maker, which is focus on your customer. This is really all about the customer. You want to think about how do I make the experience better for my customer? This allows you to generate the revenue that you're looking for, which will allow you to keep making games, keep doing the thing you love, which is make games, of course. So A-B testing really helps you to accomplish this. It's a free service, so get to it, put it in your game, start using it, start making your customers happy, and start making more revenue.